What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Prime Performance. As always, Coach Kyle right here. Coach Graham behind the camera. Peace. Or cut, okay. I don't even know what that was. Neither. I cut it out. We got oh, full house. house. Fuller house. Okay, I'm done. What's up, guys? Today I'm bringing you my top five qualities of a good coach, or top five qualities that you have a good coach. Number one. Your coach is a good listener and good communicator. There's nothing more annoying than a one-way street of communication or somebody that doesn't even listen when you talk. It's not just the exercise part of it, communication is huge in this game. Number two, your coach or your trainer never stops reading or learning more about the industry or sorry, more about the body more so and more about the mind and how it learns. The very important aspects to being a good coach because if you don't have a good understanding of how the brain learns things, you're going to be coming up to you know roadblocks in your training of your clientele because you don't really know what's the right progression to start with them because something you may want to do is slightly too complicated for them to get the good bang for their buck out of it, whereby the regressed version may be the better start point so that they can later progress more. But don't stop reading, don't stop learning. Your baseline education coming in as a trainer is not enough. I need to keep learning. Number three. Your coach walks the walk, not just talks the talk. You need to have gone through the trenches to be able to help your client understand some parts of a range or just different aspects of an exercise or different aspects of the progressional path that you're going to take. The fact that you've gone through these things yourself is going to make it a lot easier for you to explain to them that these things at times are normal, you'll get through them. The point of the matter is that you've gone through it yourself too. Number four, your coach is willing to refer you out when the issue at hand is outside of their scope of education. Say your clients, you know, they're dealing with some aches and pains and through your own education, your understanding of the body and the way you troubleshoot things, you're not able to find any kind of remedy for them. Maybe then, yes, it is time to ask them to go seek out a physiotherapist or some physiotherapist that you know, or go to a doctor and get a recommendation to go see a sports medicine doctor. But nonetheless, don't be afraid to refer somebody out to another practitioner that is going to be able to better help them with the issue at hand. Number five, troubleshooting on the spot. Look at them mechanically and see how they're moving in three dimensions of space and being able to adjust things to, from your understanding of anatomy and biomechanics, be able to adjust things to see if you can find alleviation or find the reasoning why they are feeling pains or something is just not moving as smoothly as it could. There's a gamut of issues that could be, you know, to, to play a role in why they're doing uh, something not as well as they could. But your ability to troubleshoot on the spot is huge. Not ignoring an issue and saying, oh, let's just go to a different exercise that doesn't bother that at all because I don't have the patience to deal with it. A coach needs to be patient, needs to understand that when you are coaching these people through certain drills, especially the ones that they're not good at, which are probably the ones they need to be doing, there is a lot going on in the mind, a lot going on in the body to try to get anywhere close to the right position. So you have to be very patient and coach them to be patient with themselves as well. All right, bonus. Top five qualities of a bad coach. One, inappropriate spotting. Go, 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 go. Good, put it down. Good job. Two, they do the workout for you. Hey, stop, stop, give me this much again. Do you have to make it right? Sit down, sit down. Just watch. I went to my cottage, it was really fun. Three, really stepping time. over the client trainer yeah. relationship. Yeah. To the movies after. So, uh, what else? Um, no, this wasn't. <laughs> Number four, obviously does not walk the walk. What's your athletic background? Uh, does competitive eating count? Number five, does not set a good example. So, tell me about your eating habits. 